everyone, and welcome to episode 49 of the Nitty Heather podcast. My name is Heather, and I'm coming to you from Kent, Washington, where I live with my husband Tom and our Cavalier King Charles Spaniel Pepper. This is my podcast where I talk all about my knitting and everything I am working on. I also love to shout out and feature amazing makers, anybody who is a designer, yarn dyer, accessory maker, anyone who adds to the beauty of our fiber community. If you are a new viewer, welcome. I'm so happy that you found me. I hope you enjoy yourself. And if you are a returning viewer, thank you so much for coming back. I truly appreciate it. If you would like to follow me, I am at Nitty Heather on Instagram, and I would love to connect with you there. All of the patterns and yarn and accessories I talk about will be listed and linked in the description box below. Today is Friday, June 17th, and I have a lot to tell you about, so let's get started. Today I am wearing my Basket Weave Mobius Cowl by Stacy Perry of Very Pink Knits. I actually have two of them. I am wearing my charcoal color one and then I also have a brown one that I made. I think I made these in early 2013 and I used Lion Brand Thick and Quick, which is a bulky weight yarn that is recommended for this pattern. And it's a very simple basket weave stitch. You can see the checkers of knits and pearls. You knit it straight and then she gives you the choice to twist it and seam it together with the mattress stitch. You do get to learn how to seam with the mattress stitch with this project. It is knit flat and you can keep it flat in the round or add, as you can see I did right here, a little Mobius twist to give it a little more drape. This was an excellent project to learn how to do the mattress stitch because it is such thick, bulky yarn, you can really see what you're doing and where to go into each stitch. Mattress stitch, if you're not familiar, is a very common way of seaming together any pieces of knitting, but particularly like the sleeves or different pieces of a sweater. Check out the Mobius Basket Weave Cowl by Stacy Perry of Very Pink Knits. It is a beautiful quick knit, would be a perfect for a gift knit because it does use bulky yarn. I have a couple pieces of Happy Mail acquisitions to show you this time. I have one from my Witches and Wizards Club from Crystal Skies Hand Dyed on Etsy. I believe this was from April. Here is her card. And her Witches and Wizards Club is inspired by Harry Potter. This was the fourth installment of this club based on the fourth Harry Potter book. And so this is called Mer People of the Lake. Very gorgeous. A nice teal base with some fuchsia speckles. I cannot wait to see what this will look like when it is knit up. This will make a beautiful pair of socks for me or someone else. I'm not quite sure yet, but I thought this was a very beautiful colorway that screamed mermaid for sure. This was on her 7525 Ragdoll sock base and it's absolutely gorgeous. I cannot wait to knit it up. Check out Crystal Skies Hand Dyed on Etsy. The last skein to show you this time is from my Broadway Musicals Club from Nancy of Trilogy Yarns. And this time the inspiration musical was Priscilla, Queen of the Desert, which I actually did see on Broadway in 2011. It was very fun. And here is how she translated that artwork into a beautiful skein of yarn. This is on her plush base, which is 80% superwash merino, 10% nylon, and 10% cashmere. She definitely pulled some of those pinks and the blue and gold from the Playbill artwork. I really think that looks amazing. And I can't wait to make a pair of socks with this skein as well. Again, I don't have any immediate plans for it. Let me know if you have any good pattern suggestions for this sort of variegated style of sock yarn. I'm accumulating quite a bit and I'd love to know your thoughts about what you might suggest doing with it. But for now they will look very beautiful in my stash. Check out TrilogyYarn.com Now 
on to my finished objects. I have four pairs of socks and a hat to show you. This is my May Desert Vista Dye Works socks. This was in the colorway Sleeping Zombody from Sleeping Beauty. I just did a plain vanilla sock with my toe up wedge toe. I did a fish lips kiss heel and I think about 15 rounds of two by two rib for the cuff. Here is the second one. I did not intend for these to match up. I just finished the first sock and then picked up the yarn where it left off and it ended up basically perfectly matching anyway. <laughs> I'm trying not to be so particular about knitting myself striping socks and getting them to match perfectly, but these I guess just wanted to match. So I'm super excited to have this included in my Desert Vista Direx collection. Again, this was my May pair of socks for her eighth annual monthly sock club. And I am excited to add these to my sock drawer. They're beautiful. I love the shades of pink. And I think that the vanilla stockinette really just shows, especially these beautiful zombie stripes off, very nice. I did knit this particular colorway in honor of my brand new niece, Aurora, who of course is gonna be inspiring all kinds of Sleeping Beauty things throughout her life, but I thought of her as I was making these. This is a plain vanilla sock knit toe up with the Fish Lips Kiss Heel knit up in the colorway Sleeping Zombody by Desert Vista Dye Works. Next up is my pair from The Cozy Knitter. This is called We Will Never Be Royals, and it came with this beautiful blue mini for heels, toes, and cuffs. I knit these separately, starting with my wedge toe. I did a fish lips kiss heel and 10 rounds of a two by two rib for the cuff. This is her 80-20 bliss base, which I love. And I love how these colors came together with these pretty silvers and black and blue. Very different from any other socks I own. Again, this was just a plain vanilla sock I decided to do this time, but I love how they turned out. This is a plain vanilla sock, knit toe up with the fish lips kiss heel, knit up in the colorway We'll Never Be Royals by The Cozy Knitter. Next up is my latest pair I've been knitting from my Yarnable collection. This colorway is called Wildflowers and it was from the June 2021 Yarnable box. The pattern I chose to do for these is the Union Square Socks by Mina Phillip, the Knitting Expat. Here it is, you can see a little bit closer. It's just a very pretty eyelet motif across the front of the sock. I love how this colorway sort of micro striped with the gauge I got. I knit these cuff down with about 16 rounds of a two by two rib, a fish lips kiss heel, and then a rounded toe. And I did the patterning across the whole front of the sock. And it's a very simple four row repeat, has a beautiful effect. This pattern also looks really nice with self striping yarn. Here's the other one. I just love the colors in this colorway. They definitely do remind me of wildflowers and I thought they were very nice and springy for this time of year. These are the Union Square Socks by Mina Phillip, the Knitting Expat, knit up in Wildflowers by Hypnotic Yarn from her June 2021 Yarnable box. My last pair of socks I have to show you is my sleeping socks that I have been working on. This colorway is called The Rainbow Connection by Crystal Skies Hand Dyed. And the pattern I used is the Learn to Knit Socks pattern by Stacy Perry of Very Pink Knits. It is my go-to just standard cuff down heel flap and gusset construction for a worsted weight sock pattern. Perfect for nice cozy sleeping socks. And I think this colorway knit up so fun with all the different colors of the rainbow. The heel fluff looks really cool on that one. Like I mentioned, this is a cuff down pattern. I did 12 rounds of a two by two rib, 
30 rounds down the leg, the slip stitch heel flap and gusset that she calls for, then 35 more rounds down the foot, and a wedge toe. This is an excellent beginning sock pattern that I would highly recommend, especially if you are planning on participating in Katie the Crazy Sock Lady's Summer Sock Camp or Nitty Natty's Sock Week coming up and haven't tried ever making socks before. This is a great pattern to teach you some of the basic techniques on thicker worsted weight yarn. This is the Learn to Knit Socks pattern by Stacy Perry of Very Pink Knits, knit up in the Rainbow Connection by Crystal Skies hand dyed on her bangle worsted base. My last finished object is the hat I had been working on. This is the Snowflake Toque by Bliss Yarns in Tennessee. And the yarn I used was Lang Yarns Snowflake in the teal colorway. And this is how the yarn knit itself up. How pretty is that I absolutely love how it looks. I did add this fun faux fur pom-pom. I won all of this as a little bit of a kit from Bliss Yarns, and so I was very happy to knit it up. It's a very basic, this is a bulky weight yarn, and so it's a very basic two by two brim, and then stockinette for a while across the body of the hat to let the yarn do the work for you to make it look extra fancy. It kind of does give it a little bit of a fair aisle look, but again, it is just plain knitting around and around. And then do some classic crown decreases to close it up at the top. Check out the Snowflake Toque by Bliss Yarns. This was knit up in Snowflake by Lang Yarns in the teal colorway. <laughs> Now on to my works in progress. First, I'd like to tell you about my June socks for the eighth annual Desert Vista Dye Works Monthly Sock Club. I am doing these in tandem. It is living in my cute watermelon sock bag from Fate's Thread, and I put my Desert Vista Dye Works button on it. Here's my first sock, and here's my second sock. The colorway I am working with is called Zombody Doodle Dandy. I thought it would be fun to do this colorway just in time for the 4th of July. And it's got the American red and blue with the purple and the green zombie stripes. Super pretty. This one has a Rocket Pop Progress Keeper that I got in a yarnable box last summer. And I am also trying to keep track of my rows with this cool campfire progress keeper from Burlap Handmade. Here is where I'm at on the other one. I'm not quite as far on this one. This I put a strawberry popsicle progress keeper from Sweet Cherry on Etsy. And I've got kind of a forest tree progress keeper from Burlap Handmade on the back of this one. The pattern I am doing is called the Road Trip Socks by Amanda Ironmonger who is Dog Mom Knits. And it's a very easy kind of spirally pattern. Easily memorizable, totally beautiful, looks great with self-striping yarn and I'm enjoying every bit of it. I'm being a little bit of a rebel with this pattern because I did start it toe up, but it is written cuff down. But I always like to do my self-striping yarn and especially my Desert Vista Dye Work socks toe up so that if something happens in the month, I can finish them off whenever I need to and I at least will have the foot done. I have worked up the foot and then I marked for my afterthought heel right here. So I just have about 20 or 30 rounds up the leg to do, including the cuff, and I will be good to go on these and have another month done for Desert Vista Dye Works. This is the Road Trip Socks pattern knit up in Zombody Doodle Dandy by Desert Vista Dye Works. Next up is my pair of socks from the Cozy Knitter that I am working on this month. The colorway is called A Beautiful Mess. And look at all those beautiful colors. I am doing these two at a time, toe up on a 40 inch chow goo circular needle. I have it in my bumblebee bag from 
MLD threads on Etsy. And I do have a little Bumblebee Progress Keeper from Bump on a Hill that I am using as a zipper pull. The pattern I am doing with these is absolutely gorgeous. They're called the Groovy Socks by Carolyn Hegwer. And it's a very fun two row repeat that gets a really cool kind of zigzaggy, almost woven look that looks incredible with self-striping yarn. This is definitely a good pattern to keep in your pocket for self-striping yarn. It came with this beautiful cranberry pink mini for the toes. I did a fish lips kiss heel with it. And then as I continue working up the leg, I will finish off the cuff with this mini as well. My s'mores progress keeper is from Pitter Patter Polymer on Etsy. And I've really been enjoying this pattern. This is the first time I've done this pattern and I think it is looking really cool. Give you one more little close up of it. Just something a little bit different and fun. I'm having a blast working on these. These are the Groovy Socks by Carolyn Hegwer, knit up in A Beautiful Mess by The Cozy Knitter. This was her July 2021 Yarn of the Month colorway. My next work in progress is actually already a half finished object. This is my Yarnable sock that I have been working on using the colorway Summer Vibes, which was her July 2021 Yarnable box colorway from Cheryl of Hypnotic Yarn. And here is the first sock complete. Love how this yarn knit up. The pattern I'm doing is the Sock Camp Picnic pattern, which Kay the Crazy Sock Lady came out with last summer for Summer Sock Camp. You can see there's a little bit of some pearl ridges with some nice twists in between. This isn't the greatest yarn to show off this pattern. I think a solid yarn would make this pattern pop a little bit more, but I wanted to see what it looked like. And up close in person, it looks really nice. I love this colorway. She starts this from the cuff down. I did 16 rounds of a two by two rib for the cuff, worked down the leg, and then it's a slip stitch heel flap and gusset worked down the foot with doing the pattern only across the top of the foot and then I did her rounded toe that she calls for in the pattern. Really pretty. And she did give you a specific row to stop the leg and start the slip stitch heel flop and gusset to kind of make it have a nice finish. So definitely pay attention to that if you ever work this pattern. I highly suggest it and it's a great pattern to practice doing a twisted stitch rather than having to use a cable needle for these little twists. This is the second time I've done this pattern and I do really enjoy it. Since it's the Sock Camp Picnic pattern, I do have it in my Summer Sock Camp 2021 bag with my Summer Sock Camp pin on it. This was from Stolen Minutes on Etsy. And here's where I am, I just began the cuff of the second sock. I do have my Summer Sock Camp Progress Keeper as well for these. And I'm using 32 inch Chow Goo circular needles. So I'm on my way with the second sock. I have about six more rounds left to do on the cuff before I start the pattern. And I'm looking forward to having another beautiful pair of yarnable socks in my drawer. This is the Sock Camp Picnic Pattern by Kay Litton, the Crazy Sock Lady, knit up in Summer Vibes by Hypnotic Yarn, part of her July 2021 Yarnable box. My last pair of socks I have to show you is a pair of sport socks that I'm gonna use as a lovely pair of sleeping socks. I'm being a little bit of a rebel on this one as well. I'm sort of fusing two patterns in this one. The main lace pattern that I'm using on this is from the Toe Up Lace Socks with German Shore Rose by Stacy Perry of Very Pink Knits. I am following the stitch pattern for that. But as you can see, I'm not doing it toe up. So I'm sort of combining this stitch pattern into K the Crazy Sock Ladies Vanilla DK pattern because I incorporated the slip stitch heel flap 
on this as well as the fact that I'm knitting it to cuff down. They're turning out beautifully. I am knitting two at a time in tandem. They're both actually on size 3 40 inch chow goo circular needles. This one I have completely finished the gusset. I do have a cute sunglasses progress keeper from Fangirl Fibers on this one. So I did 10 rounds of a 2x2 two two rib and then started following the stitch pattern around the whole leg of the sock. There you can see it a little more clearly. And this one I started the gusset, but I don't have quite all of the gusset stitches decreased. So I'm trying to kind of work a little bit on one, a little bit on the next in tandem with these socks. The yarn I am using is Knit Picks Hawthorne Sport in the colorway Rose City. I don't believe they make Hawthorne in a sport weight anymore. I've had this yarn in mind for this pattern for a number of years. So I'm excited to finally be knitting these up since it is technically a sport yarn and Kay's pattern with the heel flap and gusset that I'm following is DK. I decided to cast on the number of stitches for the men's size so it'd be a little bit bigger. Although this is a pretty plump sport yarn. It's not too different from DK and both patterns do suggest a size three needle. So it's very, very close. And just by kind of manipulating it and looking at it, I think these are gonna fit just fine. It's a lot of effort for what's gonna be a sleeping sock, but I might be able to shove them in a shoe or a boot as well and wear them during the day sometimes. I just really love this pattern with this yarn. I thought that was gonna look beautiful and I've had it picked out for a long time. This camper stitch marker is from my friend Julie Burlap Handmade. And I have these in my Wizard of Oz bag from Donna's Design Shop on Etsy. I always love using this bag. So once again, this is a fusion of the Toe Up Lace Socks by Stacy Perry of Very Pink Knit and the DK Weight Vanilla Sock Pattern by Kay Litton, the Crazy Sock Lady. Knit up in Hawthorne Sport by Knit Picks in the colorway Rose City. Next is a hat that I have been working on this month. I have it in this super cute cats wearing hats bag from Makers Mercantile. This was included in one of their hat of the month boxes last year. I love the rainbowy zipper. And I found this cute cat progress keeper that I thought would be perfect to use as a zipper pull. All these cats are wearing the hats from the 2021 Hat of the Month Club collection by Makers Mercantile. So it's a really cool, fun bag. I'm enjoying using it. This is the Snow Day hat by Jerry Birch. I'm not super far on it yet, but my little mermaid tail progress keeper is from Bump on a Hill on Etsy. This is a bulky weight vanilla hat pattern and I am using Schmutzerella yarns. She is a local to me dyer out of Everett, Washington, and this is a special colorway she dyed for a local yarn store, Maker's Mercantile. Here's what it looks like in the cake. How cool is this colorway? It's so rich. The colors are so strong and vivid. Once again, here's what it is looking like as it is being knit up. I think it's looking so great. I finished the brim and now I'm working up the body of the hat. I've got a few more inches to do before I close up the crown. I'm using my Knitter's Pride Dreams interchangeable size 10 needles. And I have this really pretty acorn stitch marker that I'm using to mark the beginning of the round from my friend Helen Jo, who is from Wisconsin, but I was able to meet her recently at the Acorn Street Shop, which is a local yarn store in Seattle. She was over here visiting and we were able to meet up. She's one of my friends from the Love and Stitches membership and she gifted me this cute little stitch marker that's an acorn. Thank you so much, Helen Jo. That was so nice of you and I'm so happy to use it on this lovely project. This is the Snow Day Hat by Jerry Birch, knit up in Maker's Mercantile by Schmutzarella Yarns on her Oomph Bulky Base. 
Last but certainly not least, I'd like to show you my brioche project that I have been working on. There are a lot of us in the Love & Stitches membership that have been working on brioche these last few months and I am almost done with my project. I can't wait to show you. I have it in my sloth bag from Quilt Knit Craft on Etsy and I have a cute little sloth progress keeper from simply serving on Etsy that I'm using as a zipper pull. Here it is. This is the Happiness Cowl by Vera Valamaki. It's got some pretty diamond shapes, almost kind of some squiggles depending on how you look at it, with increases and decreases in brioche. This is the outside. And here's what it looks like on the inside. The coolest thing about brioche is that it is reversible. The colors I am using, Amazed by Lolo Did It on her Simple DK. This is Wildwood Flower, also Lolo Did It on her Simple DK. And then my teal is called Teal We Meet Again by Rainy Day Fibers, but now she is rebranded as Trilogy Yarns. So here's the three yarns together and how they are coming together in this beautiful cowl. It is a loop style cowl that will wrap twice around my neck. And it does have just some simple increases and decreases to give it its texture. I am just starting on the third section which will continue with the teal and then instead of the lighter pink wildwood flower, the inside's going to be the darker pink amazed color. So each color gets to work and play off each other. So that is really kind of a cool design feature of this cowl. I think I have about 28 rounds and then an I-cord bind off left and I will be done with this beauty. I'm super excited, super proud to be doing another project with brioche that's a little more challenging with some increases and decreases but not so intimidating. They're not that bad. If you want to try a pattern that's got some very simple increases and decreases, this would be a good one to look at. This is The Happiness Cowl by Vera Valamaki, knit up in Lolo Did It's Simple DK, as well as the DK base from Rainy Day Fibers. Now, Trilogy Yarns. Well, I think that's about all I have for you this episode. Thank you so much for joining me and spending a little bit of time with me. I really appreciate it. Please don't forget to give this video a like and consider subscribing. That would really mean a lot to me. And as always, I love to hear your feedback on the podcast or any ideas you might have for future content. Please feel free to leave a comment down below or message me on Instagram. I am at Nitty Heather on Instagram and I would love to hear from you. Until next time, be well, be kind, and happy knitting. We'll see you in the next one. Bye.